Okay, here I will comment briefly on the technique which is called approxim approximate identity. That's the one which connected closely with convolution, and that's how it is built. You start with a function, i, which you assume non-negative, uh, which is summable uh, on the real line. M here stands for the bag measure. And you set a sequence of functions based on your function of i, like this. Um, yeah, for this, uh, where x is the number on the real line and n takes the values 1, 2, and so on. Uh, if you, a typical example of such a sequence built on the non negative function, if you choose, for instance, a function file like this, and if you start doing these dilations and scalings, the typical look of the sequence of functions you will end up with will be like. So, so the larger your n, uh, the more focused this function will be, the more focused this function will be around the origin. Now, basing on this sequence of functions, which is called the approximate identity, there are a number of techniques uh, built uh, with, the, with the help of convolution, and I'm going to discuss this with you, uh, and I will frame it in a, as a sequence of elementary properties. Uh, the first property I'd like to mention is that the function phi n uh, it is also summable, it is also in L1 RM, and in fact it delivers the same L1 norm as the original phi because it's a simple substitution thing, right? If you compute the norm, the function is non-negative, so there's no need for the absolute value around here. So if you compute the norm, if you sub in the definition of phi, which is like this, and if you now make a substitution, for an x with a letter x1, that will be just the integral of the function phi, which is the norm of the function phi. And so, in fact, all of these uh, elements of this sequence, uh, all, all the functions phi sub n, they are all summable and with identical to, with, identi with the norm identical to phi. In fact, uh, what is missing is that the requirement that this value is in fact 1. Proof. This is just a, this is a requirement for the uh, for the sequence to be called approximate identity. So in fact, sequence is called approximate identity when it is built like this. And on the top of that, you require that uh, the integral of the function phi is one. Okay. Now the second property I'd like to, to show is that is, is, is like this. If you compute the integral of the element of a sequence of the approximate identity over the real line where the origin is punched out with some neighborhood around it, then you can again do the direct computation, you can do the direct substitution, you will end up with an expression like this. And now, using the fact that phi is an integrable function, and using the, the fact that the Lebesgue integral is a continuous measure, this will go to zero. And now, the third property I'd like to discuss, that's the one actually which justifies the term approximate identity, it goes like this. If you have a function f from the class of uniformly continuous functions on the real line, if you have a function f from the class of uniformly continuous functions on a real line, then the construction like this, the convolution of this function with the elements of the, of the approximate identity give you, gives you the approximation of the original function f in terms of the uniform, in terms of the supremum norm. So every time you'd like to approximate your function with some well, let's say better functions, uh, which way they are better, we haven't discussed yet, we will discuss it in the following comments, but these ones will be very good functions, of very good, uh, having lots of good properties. So every time you need to approximate a function which is uniform, which is, which is uniformly continuous with some functions of better structure, and this will be your, certainly will be your better structure, convolution gives you a nice mechanism to do that, basing on the approximate identity sequence. So the proof for that goes like this. You consider the difference 
of this function and this function at some point, you sub in the definition of convolution, here it is. Uh, now you observe that in fact you can take this f term under the integration, that's the way I did it here, and you can do it because, because of this requirement, because of this requirement, because the integral of f of phi n is also 1. Now, when you look at this integral, you split this integral into different components. But before you do that, you first you have to use the fact that the function is uniformly continuous. So you fix an epsilon positive. You claim that there is a delta positive, such that the supremum like this is controlled by epsilon as long as your increment is smaller than delta. And now you look at this integral and you split it in two different integrals. First you take the integral over real line where the neighborhood of the origin is punched, punched out. And then you take the one uh, where well, you take the integral over the neighborhood of the origin. And you, we will estimate these two components in a different way. First component here is controlled by you just take the max of this term, you take the max of this term, and you take the integral of the remaining factor over the over the set like this. That's a Hurley inequality in fact, applied twice, and you have the control like this. Here you do it differently. You again take the Hurley inequality, uh, but now you use this supremum to control the first factor because this time your increment y here within the control with the bounds you can control by delta so you control the whole factor together by this supremum and you control this by just the whole integral like this so the second term is controlled by the following expression now all you all, all what is left to do is just to start pushing your n to the infinity which will vanish this factor and therefore will vanish the control over the first term here and that, uh, on the right hand side here this is just one and this is controlled by epsilon as long as y less than delta and so you arrive to you arrive to the conclusion that this difference we started with in absolute value less than epsilon for every x on the real line <coughs>